Okay. I got it. Hey there everyone happy Monday um, the weekends just seem to go by too fast these days don't they so hi I'm Rundy Murphy um, epidemiologist and director of disease surveillance at the Mobile County Health Department today is Monday January the 11th this is our 2 30 um, Facebook live update on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on Mobile County so worldwide we've seen more than 90,000 cases of COVID-19 now with um, about you know 22 million 500 thousand in the U.S. and over 400 thousand in Alabama reported this morning. As far as deaths goes, we're approaching two million deaths related to COVID-19 worldwide, with nearly 375 thousand um, occurring in the U.S. Um, over 5,300 in Alabama. I heard some stats earlier when I was on a CDC call that um, on average 240,000 cases of COVID-19 are added in the United States each day with um, a record-breaking seven-day average of 3,000 deaths reported daily in the United States. So we are definitely in unprecedented waters here with um, the record-breaking um, counts that we're seeing related to COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. So in Mobile County, on our daily report, we're reporting for January 11th, nearly 29,000 cases of COVID-19, 28,930. Yesterday, 214 cases were added. Monday is usually a sort of our lowest day of the week, so um, I will not look forward to seeing that number climb throughout the week. Um, 531 have died with COVID-19. We added four um, since yesterday. The cumulative number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 stands at 3,590. Um, 12 additional hospitalizations were added yesterday. And that very scary um, figure that we've been monitoring, you know, for the past one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, we have had a daily record-breaking number of patients hospitalized with COVID-19 on any given day. Yesterday, 263 patients were in mobile hospitals with a COVID-19 diagnosis. Again, have broken um, our own record each day over the last seven days. So that is incredibly concerning to everyone throughout healthcare, throughout public health, throughout the community because we, we need our hospitals to be able to um, absorb the additional hospitalizations attributable to COVID-19 infections. So we always get questions asking, you know, how are the hospitals doing? Um, they're stressed and they are um, at capacity. We're, um, when I checked the bed availability in the statewide system, we were sort of um, at minus one as the number of adult ICU beds. Uh, we talk about how we know this is a fluid number. It changes throughout the day. Hospitals can expand and, you know, can um, conserve. And um, by discharging people or ex extending ICU beds to other areas and that sort of thing, but we are at a critical shortage of adult ICU beds. And so that is, is something that we are concerned about. We hear that lots of rural hospitals are calling our hospitals trying to get transfers in and they're unable to take them. We know that the 15 or so outbreaks that we have in long-term care facilities are placing additional burden on our hospitals with um, COVID patients needing to be, be moved out of long-term care and into hospitals where they can get the, the, the higher level of care that they need. So again, just um, things are at a, um, a very um, delicate situation right now with regard to the burden of 
COVID on our hospitals and our healthcare system. The other thing that we are hearing is that some of the rapid testing facilities around town are um, getting short on rapid testing supplies. We've talked from time to time about um, how that might, we might start to see that with, um, as the volume of testing increases and there have been some supply chain shortages that we are hearing from some of our partners that they're running lower on rapid tests, which of course pushes people to do more testing for PCR, which generally is a 24 to 72 hour result return, but as more and more PCR is done, then we will start to see uh, those result times extend um, beyond that, that really um, preferable 48 hour window. So from our expanded report, I'll just briefly comment on, we're now at a cumulative rate of 6,900 um, cases per 100,000 people. Last week, the number of cases reported to us was nearly 2,000. So 1,965, that was an increase of around um, 200 over the previous week. So we have seen an increasing um, number in the, the cases reported weekly since, actually since October. So um, every week we have more and more cases reported to us. Uh, let's see if there are other things that I need to mention. I've talked about the increase in the number of hospitalizations. So we're seeing on average, you know, over 200 um, people hospitalized. That's quickly going to get to 220s and 230s when we look at the seven day average. So more to come on that. The, the number of deaths reported last week was 11. Um, that's always a little bit of a lag measure. So we're not seeing the numbers of deaths that we saw in the spring and in the end of July, August period. But again, the number of deaths tend to lag. And then the percent positive laboratory test, which is a measure that we look at, um, it was down slightly last week. The number of tests was up, the percent positive was um, down slightly, but we're still looking at around, you know, above 15% in our traditional public health surveillance. And when we talk to our, our partners that are doing rapid um, testing at the urgent cares throughout the, the county, they are seeing percent positives of nearly um, 30% overall and in some locations on any given day they may see as many as 40 percent of the people that they test are testing positive so a little bit about the zip codes i like to call these out to focus attention where we're seeing um, high rates of of transmission per capita so again this is satsuma Criolla area now we've added zip code 36505 um, in the sims area and along um, 36618, which I think is that um, sort of between that North and South Crichton area and Sims. Now we're seeing that transportation corridor going along Highway 98 or Moffett Road. We're still seeing most of South Mobile now with very high rates of infection. Every, you know, Grand Bay, Irvington, the Bayou and Theodore all in, um, you know, dark red are very high rates of infection uh, now, along with some interior zip codes um, with 36607, 02, and 36693. So those are the focal, the really hot spots for per capita transmission in the last couple of weeks. So if you are in those areas, please be extra diligent about protecting yourself from COVID transmission when you're out and about in the community, when you, you know, attend gatherings um, as you are, are at work and running errands and all of those things where you are mixing um, with people who don't live in the same household as you. So I will answer a couple of questions and then make a couple of announcements um, from the media. Someone recognizing that we have a new high of 363 persons hospitalized. What's the current ICU census and how many ventilators? So as I mentioned, we are um, at capacity with ICU beds for the moment, but the number of ventilators is still quite generous. So we have um, almost, well, yeah, almost exactly half of the ventilators that are in Mobile County are still available for use. What type of strain are these numbers putting on resources? So as I've mentioned, our, you know, the hospitals are seeing an incredible burden of hospitalizations. 
the emergency department visits for COVID-like illness are up. COVID isolation and quarantine among healthcare workers is up. You know, we're seeing um, and hearing from hospitals and nursing long-term care facilities that more and more staff are having to stay home because of exposures or infections, um, because of high community transmission. Our treatments, some of the treatments that have been available to us um, earlier in the year, convalescent plasma, um, antibody treatments, we're hearing that there are um, fewer of those resources, well, not as many um, av doses available as are needed. So it may not be that there are fewer doses, but that we have so many more people right now that would benefit from those um, those medications or those therapies rather for COVID-19. And we just, the hospitals don't have enough. They would like to have a much more with um, which to treat patients. Let's see, asking about keeping track of the number of vaccines that have been distributed in Mobile County. We know what the the statewide numbers are. We have they, The state has not been providing county level data on that yet, but as we um, learn that information, we will certainly try to um, share it with you. Um, but again, that is, is an elusive um, figure right now, similar to the way when we first started seeing cases, everyone was scrambling to know how many cases, how many cases, and now we're in the same boat with regard to how many vaccines have been administered. I think it will just take the state to um, to work through some things before they, they feel comfortable sharing that data at the county level. Um, someone asking if the Mobile County Health Department has received an ultra cold freezer that we ordered. We have not, but we have a memorandum of understanding with a local laboratory who has agreed to, to store um, ultra cold vaccine for us. Um, were we to receive it, however, right now the health department is receiving only Moderna vaccine that requires minus 20 freezers, and we have about half a dozen of those um, littered among our healthcare clinics around the county. And then someone at, or some, you know, also media asking, looking for a general comment on how we're handling the 75 and over population, all the calls coming in. So just to comment on this, so on Friday, the state health department announced a toll-free number for people to call to make a, a, an appointment to get a COVID vaccine. That number initially was published for um, the target groups, which were 1A, healthcare providers, EMS, and eventually, I think next week, they announced that they would open appointments up to any first responders and anyone the age of 75 and older. So that line was open. It's 855-566-5333. And it was intended to be used by healthcare personnel, first responders, and anyone 75 or older. But the number was inundated. And I believe there were more than 1.1 million calls to that number on Friday alone. And a precious few people were able to get through. It caused incredible um, aggravation and um, frustration for both the phone bank and for ADPH and for us and for all of you who hope that you would be able to call in. Please do not call that number unless you are a healthcare provider, a first responder, or if you're 75 and over. Also, please do not call your local hospitals trying to get in to get vaccinated because they are now overwhelmed with calls and are having difficulty trying to just receive calls from their patient population. So I understand how frustrating this is that, you know, um, things seem to be sort of getting off on the wrong foot or being um, a little bit less clear than everyone would want them to be. But just to remind you that, you know, Trillions of dollars were put into federal monies, were put into warp speed towards to rush towards the development of a, of a vaccine. And yes, we expected one to become available sometime in 2021, but there were not a lot of federal funds pushed to the states to try to deliver these vaccines. So we're working as, you know, as hard as we can to try to find solutions. And as we do, we will let you know. So currently, again, use the 855-566-5333 number. The Mobile County Health Department is planning a, a, a vaccination event 
sort of a, you know, first come, first serve event for these categories, healthcare providers, first responders, and people 75 and over for Saturday. We will let you know more information about that when we have it, have it all sort of um, firmed up for you. It will not be at one of our Mobile County Health Department locations. So please don't come to, to our location hoping to get vaccine on Saturday because you'll be in the wrong spot. Please stay tuned to Facebook. Stay tuned to um, the information that we provide daily, and we will provide that information publicly when we have it available to us. Let's see. Someone asking on Facebook about our numbers being worse than they've ever been and asking about schools opening. And yes, I have been told that the schools have opened today as they planned. So just one more event. <laughs> Let's see. So someone asking about how Mobile will deal with, with the shortage of beds and staff. So there are things that hospitals can do to try to um, relieve some of the pressure on bed availability and health care. And that, these are things, you know, up to them. They can restrict visitation. They can... Um, call off non-elective surgeries. There are some things that they can do to try to, um, you know, relieve the strain on beds. In some situations, they could potentially open up other areas or, you know, double up rooms, that sort of thing. So but these are up to the hospitals um, to decide what to do to try to, like I said, sort of um, deal with the enormous influx of of hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Anything else? Okay. Just wanted to mention, we'll talk about this a little bit later this week, but on um, Monday, January 18th, um, in honor of Martin Luther King Day and in partnership with community leaders, the um, Mobile County Health Department and the Stone Street Baptist Church is um, sponsoring a free drive-through COVID-19 rapid testing event and will be providing flu vaccination on Monday, January 18th at Stone Street Baptist Church from 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. That's at 311 Tunstall Street in Mobile. At the about the same time, well, actually it looks like it's in the afternoon, so you can get your flu vaccine and get tested for COVID in the morning, and then I think go across the street or around the block to True Vine Missionary Baptist Church to participate in a blood drive that will take place there at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church from 1 to 6 at 1850 Martin Luther King Avenue. So I'm not sure, but this is probably posted on our Facebook page someplace or will be. Um, shortly. So just wanted to give you a heads up about that, um, sort of a day of service and um, celebration of Martin Luther King Day, partnering with community leaders of faith and Stone Street Baptist Church and True Vine Missionary Baptist. Will be closed. Yeah, the downtown Keeler location. All, all health closed. Okay, Mark's reminded me that on in observation of uh, Martin Luther King Day on January the 18th, all Mobile County Health Department locations will be closed and some of our staff will be participating in this outreach event. So unless that is all, One so, okay. So someone's asking, I actually know her. Hey, Sharon. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. So at long-term care facilities, the, the nursing homes first and then the assisted living facilities and then the skilled assisted living facilities are receiving vaccination for residents and staff through um, what's called the, the Long-Term Care Pharmacy Program. This is a federal program where um, CVS, Walgreens, and Senior Care have been allocated COVID vaccine specifically for long-term care facilities. So the vaccination by the pharmacies directly in the facilities started, I believe, on the 28th or the week of the 28th, one day a week in those facilities over a couple of weeks. Now, we have heard some onesies and twosies that, you know, a couple of locations, long-term care facilities that didn't make it on the list. 
and we're working hard with the state partners and the feds to try to make sure that all of our long-term care facilities, the SNFs, the ALFs, and the SCALFs, <laughs> that they all are on that list and are, are queued for vaccination. If for some reason um, a long-term care facility you know, cannot get on the list or they are skipped over for some reason, don't worry, contact us and we will make sure that we include you with our priority vaccinations um, in the early stages of the vaccination at the health department or with some of our other community partners that have a little bit of vaccine. So that, I hope, answers that question. Okay, I'm getting the all clear sign um, from Mark. So with that, I will end our update for today and just say to everyone, you know, please continue doing your part. I, I get it, we're all tired. And we really just wish um, COVID would go away in 2021, but it's gonna be here with us for a long while. And get your vaccine as soon as you have the opportunity to and continue wearing your mask and physical distancing and washing your hands and staying at home if you're sick to try to slow community spread as to you know not further overwhelm our healthcare facilities um, with hospitalized hospitalizations due to COVID-19. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll talk on Friday.